giant eucalypts play an irreplaceable role in many of Australia's ecosystems. These towering elders develop hollows which make them nature's high-rises, housing everything from endangered squirrel gliders to lace monitors. Over 300 species of vertebrates in Australia depend on hollows in large old trees. These skyscraper trees can take more than 190 years to grow big enough to play this nesting and denning role, yet developers are cutting them down at an astounding speed. In other places, such as Victoria's Central Highlands mountain ash forests, the history of logging and fire means that less than 1.2% of the original old growth forest remains, old growth being the part that supports the highest density of large old hollow trees. And it's not much better in other parts of our country. David Lindemeyer, AO, is an Australian scientist and academic. He's an expert in landscape ecology, conservation and biodiversity. Here he explains just how these trees form, the role they play, and how very hard they are to replace. Hollow bearing trees. They're very large old trees that have holes in them thanks to the ageing process. But they're incredibly important to Australian animals. Puzzled? Let me explain. There are about 800 different species of eucalypts in Australia, and almost all of them develop cavities that animals can live in. That means birds like yellow-tailed black cockatoos and gang-gang cockatoos, striated pardalotes and spotted pardalotes, as well as crimson rosellas and marsupials like the greater glider and yellow-bellied gliders, the mountain brush-tailed possum, and Victoria's faunal emblem, the leadbeater's possum, as well as reptiles like the lace monitor, and different kinds of snakes and lizards. So they're like skyscrapers of diversity in our forests. But how do they form? In other parts of the world, animals like woodpeckers make their own hollows. Australia doesn't have woodpeckers, so hollows form over a very slow process of decay. Termites, fire, bacteria and even fungi can all play a role in the hollow making process. And this means it can take literally hundreds of years for cavities to develop to the size that many animals need, especially large cockatoos, possums and gliders. And the length of time it takes for those cavities to form is why fire, land clearing and logging have had such an impact. For instance, in Victoria, the mountain ash grows in a very specific way. The current average age of Mount Nash in Victoria is 70 years. But it's 120 years before cavities even start to form. And it's 170 to 190 years before cavities are large enough for animals to nest in. There's currently only about 1% of original old growth mountain ash stock remaining in the central highlands of Victoria. And what's left is 100 years away from supporting wildlife. So in the meantime, we're seeing hollow using possums, gliders and birds decline. The greater glider, which is essentially a gliding koala, has seen its population decline to a third of what it was since just 1997. Younger tree stocks are also more vulnerable to fire, and that means rather than just hollowing out, they fall over. So with hollows and forests like the Central Highlands either gone, or perhaps a hundred years away. Surely there's a solution, or something developers can do to offset their impact? What about other homes to replace what's missing? Well, in 2010, a section of the Hume Highway was widened between Holbrook and Coolack in New South Wales. Hundreds of big paddock trees were knocked over in the process. Many were 300 to 500 years old. To compensate for the loss, the developer was required to install one nest box for every hollow lost. Roughly 600 nest boxes were installed. Offsets for biodiversity for these kinds of projects are increasingly popular in Australia and around the world, but we rarely find out if they're actually effective. What happens usually is that people just say, well, we need to knock down some trees, 
but let's just stick up some nest boxes and we can say we've all been good little Vegemites, everything's fine. To the New South Wales government's credit, they allowed our research team to actually monitor these nest boxes from 2010 to 2013. The boxes were specifically designed for three threatened species, the squirrel glider, superb parrot and the brown tree creeper, and they were almost totally ineffective. Apart from the fact that there were only seven sightings of the squirrel glider, two of the superb parrot and none of the brown tree creeper ever using the boxes, they actually became home for feral species, and were still, 10% of the boxes collapsed or were stolen. Simply setting up nest boxes is what we call the Christmas principle. It's the thought that counts. But the reality is it makes minimal difference to animal conservation. And they have other problems. Nest boxes don't store large amounts of carbon, or produce flowers, or seeds, or pollen. And the flowers, pollen and seeds all go back into the ecosystem through bees and other pollinators that are integral to growing crops like canola. So how do you actually offset the environmental damage done when you lose these trees? Well, one of the things you should probably do is plant up extensive areas of woodland in the surrounding environment. Put vegetation back into the system then leave it for the 150 plus years it actually needs to build up a new cohort of ecosystem sustaining trees. If we're building human infrastructure, then we need to maintain and build our environmental infrastructure too. Because if we don't, well, it's a lot harder to get back than a highway.